Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Gigi, and welcome to Eden's Gate, Sepulchre, Savage, or better known as E4S. First, we have our markers placed in this configuration. I'm not too sure why the one marker is hanging out by itself, but we'll just let it hang out there for now. First up, Titan will cast Stone Crusher, which is an AoE tank buster that hits three times. Next up, he'll cast Weight of the Lands, which place orange AoEs on random squares on the stage. Avoid these AoEs, and at the same time, everyone will get this yellow diamond on top of their head. If you get this yellow diamond, that means that you have to stay on your own square and have nobody else in your square with you when it explodes. We've assigned places for each of the party members to stand in their own squares when they're around Titan, as you can see here. We have the two ranged DPS in the corners, the two tanks in the two center squares, the two melee behind them, and then the healers on the squares near the middle. Just keep in mind, whatever configuration your group sets up, keep it consistent because it becomes more important later in the fight. Right before each yellow diamond explodes, Titan will cast Evil Earth, which will light up two random squares on the stage. These Evil Earth AoEs will explode on the first square they spawn at, and then explode on all the squares around it, continuing outward. Think of it like throwing a rock into a still pond. The rock splashes in the water at a point, and the waves ripple outward. Once you see the explosion go off, which looks like this whitish, bluish energy, it's safe to move into the square that just exploded. During the Evil Earth AoE, there will be two basic patterns. These patterns determine two things, whether they're fast or slow, and whether the party goes towards A or the B corner. If they spawn in the middle squares, then we call them fast. This is because the wave AoE will hit the party stack point sooner, so you have to move sooner. If they're on the outside squares, then we call them slow. And you guessed it, the wave is going to come to the party a little bit later, so you need to hold off before you move into the safe square. The safe square is the corner that is furthest away from the evil earth. In this case here, it's going to be at the B marker. And in this case, it's going to be the A marker. Once the yellow markers on your head explode, then you can run to either the A or the B marker for the party stack. Hang tight here at the marker for the explosions to reach the party, and then go into the middle square that just exploded. At the same time that happens, the whole party will get orange markers above their heads. These markers mean that you have to stack with somebody else in a square and share the damage. In our case, we avoid the wave AoEs from the Evil Earth by moving into the middle square from our party stack at B. This would also be the same case if the party were on the A marker as well. Something that's helped me with these mechanics is that as soon as you see the animation for the mechanic go off, it's safe to move into the relative safe spot. The orange markers on everyone will explode, and then Titan will cast Voice of the Land, which will be a party-wide AoE. Next, he'll cast Geo Crush, which is where he'll jump to a random side square. There's going to be a giant AoE knockback indicator, and you want to place your character right about here to survive the knockback. You can also use your anti-knockbacks here. It's best to practice positioning your character now because he'll do this geocrush jump again later in the phase, and you might not have your anti-knockback abilities back up. Right after he slams down on his jump, five people will get the orange marker and three people will get the yellow marker. The yellow markers will always appear on a tank, a healer, and a DPS. Titan's animation will either form for his hands or his go-kart. Depending on which form he takes, will determine the follow-up mechanics, so let's go over each one separately. For Titan's hands, we have the orange folks stand in Titan's square, and the three yellow folks stand in a line from Titan on their own squares, going across the stage as you can see here. Once you see all the animations go off, you want to sidestep your character out of the square you were just in into the squares right next to you, as there will be explosions on the inside line. Titan will then cast Voice of the Land, which will be a party-wide AoE. Then we pull Titan to one of these inside corners, and not really the middle, to prep for what we call the T-shaped AoE. Titan will then turn to a side, which will indicate where he jumps to, as well as show us how the T-shaped AoE is going to appear on the stage, as well as where the safe spots are. The safe spots will always be on the two squares that are on the back left and the back right relative to what side Titan is jumping to. Right after he jumps, then lands, and you see that T AoE go off, you want to run towards Titan, or at least towards the middle of the stage. Titan will then slam on one side of the stage, indicating by the orange AoE on the ground, and then slam the other side. After the first slam AoE, you want to go into that side that Titan just hit because he'll always slam the opposite side. Once there, you'll see the classic Titan bombs drop onto the stage. If you remember in classic Titan, the first rock bombs that appear will be the first ones to explode. At this point, you want to put your character on the second set of bombs that drop, wait for the first set to explode, and then run into the area where the first set of bombs exploded. Just keep in mind that you may be on the side or in the corners 
depending on the order the way the bombs drop down. Just remember there will only ever be two bomb patterns for this phase, bombs that are placed in the corners and the middle, and the bomb pattern that's placed on the sides. Right after that, Titan will change back into his original form to set up for the next mechanic. Backing up for a hot minute, Titan can also change into Go-Kart during the first Geo Crush. We have the folks with the orange markers stand right next to Titan, and the folks with the yellow marker spread out like so. Once Titan does his Go-Kart dash, everyone will get knocked back to the edge of the stage. At this point, the orange and yellow markers will go off, but everybody needs to step towards the inside of the stage because the square that you were just on is going to explode. Immediately after the knockback, the main tank should run to the spot where Titan just dashed from because Titan will dash to the person with the highest aggro. The damage that the main tank takes is also based on distance, hence why it's best for the main tank to head back to the spot where Titan just dashed from. Right after that, the party should group up underneath Titan to avoid a donut AoE, and at the same time, everyone will get the yellow markers on their heads. After you dodge the donut AoE, spread out these yellow markers as you did during the first part of this fight. Titan will then change back to his original form to set up for the next mechanic. So after you deal with either Titan Hands or Titan Go-Kart, Titan will cast Crumbling Downs, which will put two markers on two party members. One thing to note here is that one marker will always appear on a DPS, and another marker will always appear on a tank or a healer. Since we know this, we have our DPS place their markers on D, while tanks and healers can place their markers on A. As the two rocks are placed on A and D, another two markers will appear on another two party members. Same as before, the DPS will get one, and the healers and tanks will get one. The DPS can preposition themselves to place their marker on C, while the tanks and the healers can do the same thing and place their marker on B. The whole group needs to avoid the AoEs coming down from the A and D side. Then, as those AoEs go off, the party should run back to the A and D side to avoid the B and C side. As you're running back towards the A and D markers, Titan will drop a set of three bombs down in the middle, then two more rows drop on either side of the stage. If you remember from Classic Titan, you want to position your team on the side where the last set of Titan bombs dropped. Also, you have to position your party behind one of the big rocks that's not glowing. Titan will then cast Seismic Wave, which must be dodged by standing behind one of those non-glowing big rocks. Since Seismic Wave is a line of sight AoE, you want to put that big rock in between you and Titan. Moments afterwards, the middle set of bombs will go up and then just run into the middle. Next up, he'll cast Voice of the Land, which is the raid-wide AoE, followed by Stone Crutcher, which is the Tank Buster AoE. Next, he'll cast Geo Crush, which will start either the Titan Hand phase or the Titan Go-Kart phase. One thing to note here as well is whichever phase you get for the first Geo Crush, you will always get the opposite phase for the second one. So for instance, if you started off with Go-Kart, you're going to get Hands in the second phase, and if you started off with Hands, you're going to get Go-Kart in the second phase. So once you're in either the Hand or the Go-Kart phase, once all of its relative mechanics complete, Titan decided to eat his spinach and turn into Papa Titan. Once Titan screams, and yells and throws a temper tantrum, he'll become targetable in a few seconds and throw out a raid-wide AoE called Earthen Fury. Next, he'll pump up the volume by slamming his fists together, so you want to look out for these two glowy power-up indicators on his fists. These glowy charge-up indicators will tell you which fist he's going to hit with first and the second one. The fists will always hit one after the other, and they only hit twice. The varying combinations could be either two hits on the left, two hits on the right, or alternating sides. There's plenty of time to dodge into the safe areas. At the same time the fists are going off, orange AoE squares will appear on the stage, so of course, you don't want to stand in those. Next up, Titan will cast Dual Earthen Fists. A giant blue knockback AoE circle will be placed down in front of Titan, and one party member will get a blue rock marker above their head. There are several ways to handle this mechanic with your party and the configuration that you do it in. The most important part is that the blue marker will explode the square that you're on and all of the squares around it. Also for the tanks, here you need to keep first and second aggro because Titan will throw out two AoEs that target the people with first and second aggro. If by some chance you don't have your anti-knockback, the exact place you want to stand for the knockback is on the two inside squares at their middle point and right behind the giant blue circle. The two tanks will then get a stack marker that needs to be shared with only the tanks and not the party. After the tanks take the share damage, Titan will cast Tectonic Uplift. A series of events happen here, so let's go over each one of them in detail. The square quadrants with the orange AoEs on them will rise up while the square quadrants that have no orange AoEs on them will stay at ground level, as you can see here. We have the four DPS go up front while the tanks and the healers go to the back. Both groups should stand in this AoE because we all want to be on the high ground. However, right before the uplift, two people will get the blue markers above their heads. For this mechanic, those blue markers only appear on a DPS and a tank or a healer. The two people with those markers need to take the low ground 
around and stand at the corners. We have the DPS go to the front side and the tanks and the heals go towards the back side. Once the blue marker explodes, the people on the ground level should go into a safe square and stay there. This becomes really important for the folks on the high ground in a moment. Certain squares on the bottom level will light up with AoEs. There will always be a bottom quadrant that has two safe spots and three safe spots. As you can see here, the two people that had the blue marker already are in their safe squares. They don't move so the party members on the high ground can know which safe square to go into. The folks on the upper level will get new markers, either an orange, yellow, or a blue one. The two people with the blue marker will need to stay up top and place themselves on the upper level corners in their respective quadrant. The people with the yellow marker will need to drop down to the side that has the three safe spots for them, while the people with the orange marker need to drop down to the side that has the two safe spots. If you remember, the people with the orange markers need to stack together, while the people with the yellow markers need to take their own squares. So after all that resolves, everyone should group up on the bottom level in the middle for heals because Titan will get mad at you that you did this mechanic right and grace your party with a raid-wide AoE. The stage will come back to normal, so get ready for the next mechanic. Titan will then cast Rock Throw. First, you have to watch which side Daddy Titan is going to throw his first punch. It's an incredibly long tell, but the arm that he pulls back with is the side that Titan will punch out one of the quadrants. At the same time, the healers will get their rock jails and will need to place their rock jails on the side at which Titan is not punching out. One healer should place their jail in the front quadrant while the other healer places their jail in the back quadrant. If the jails are placed too close to each other, they'll gain a buff and you can't DPS them down. The distance that we found works best is for the back healer to be slightly behind the center cross and the front healer to be a little bit in front of the center cross. By the time the healer's jails go off, Titan will have punched out one quadrant on the stage. You'll want to break out the healer on the quadrant where the side of that quadrant was just punched out. For example, if Titan just punched out the front quadrant, you want to break out the front healer first. If Titan punched out the back quadrant, you'll want to break out the back healer first. Titan's next left or right arm swing will determine which quadrant he will knock out next. In this example, if Titan swings left, he's going to break the quadrant at D for Delta. If he swings right, he'll break out the quadrant at B or Beta. Titan will always knock out the adjacent quadrant next to the side that's empty. And if he swings on the side that only has one quadrant left, he will knock out that quadrant. Titan will do one last swing that will knock out one more quadrant, and the rest of the party will have one quadrant to stand on. The current strategy for the healer jail phase is to have a ranged DPS stack behind the back healers and limit break both jails. Regardless if you have LB2 or LB3, use the limit break here anyway, because you'll get a limit break 3 right before the end of the fight. Once your party is standing on the final quadrant, Titan will cast Earthen Fury for a raid-wide AoE. Moments later, the stage will reconstruct, and then Titan will throw out Tumult, where he'll slam his fist down five times for party-wide damage. Right after that, he'll throw down the giant blue knockback AoE, so position yourself accordingly. After the knockback, there's not going to be a tank stack this time. Instead, Titan will charge up both of his fists to either attack the left or the right side of the stage. As before, Titan will only punch two times, but this time, there's an evil earth on the stage. So not only will you have to dodge both of Titan's punches, you'll also have to dodge the AoE wave that propagates from the evil earth. It's important here to focus on one mechanic at a time. Focus on the first punch first, then see if you need to go to the other side or not. After that, look at where the evil earth AoE is spawning, and then since you're on the safe side and don't have to worry about the second fist hitting, you can safely dodge the wave that's propagating outward from the evil earth. Next up, Titan will cast Tectonic Uplift, where the quadrants that show the AoEs will rise up. For this rise, everyone in the party should be on the top level stage. Four people will get the orange markers on their heads. We have the people with the orange markers stack at the front, while the people who don't have the orange markers stack at the back. Don't forget here that the people with the orange marker on their head need to stack in the same square in order to share the damage. There will always be a tank, healer, and two DPS in each of the upper quadrants because of how the orange markers come out. Healers will get the jail skin and they should stack on the corners but on the innermost side of their square corner. Because as everyone is DPSing out their own healer jail, everyone will get the yellow marker on their head. 
At this point, everyone needs to take their own square, as well as the healer, before they go into the jails, they need to take their own square as well, because they won't be able to adjust when the yellow markers come out. Once each group breaks their own healer out of their own jail, each group will get a blue marker that will only appear on the tanks or the healers. The person with this blue marker should jump down to their adjacent side and stand in their corner square. Similar to the first heights on this mechanic, orange AoEs will appear on the bottom parts of the stage. Four DPS will get the orange markers again, and so all four DPS need to stack on the same square on the bottom. There will only be two safe spots in one quadrant, and one safe spot on the other quadrant. So the DPS with the orange markers need to go to the quadrant that has the two safe spots and stack their orange markers. Meanwhile, the remaining tank or healer at the top will have to put their blue markers in the corners on the top level. Because on the top, the other tank and healer will both get their blue AoE markers and they need to stand on their respective corners on the top. After all that stack in for heals on the ground floor, heal up for Earthen Fury, the stage will reset itself once again and Titan will throw out Tumults. Next up, Titan will wind back on one side or the other, and then he will punch out a quadrant. The tanks will get the tank stack, which must be shared. And just as Titan is going to punch for the second time, everyone in the party will get a marker on their head. Either an orange, yellow, or blue marker. We have the blue marker stand all the way at the back, with the oranges standing all the way at the front, nearest Titan, and the people with the yellow markers spread out around the orange folks. In case the stage is side to side, we have the person with the blue marker stand on the side that just got punched out. The people with the orange markers will be near the center, while the folks with the yellow will take their own separate squares around the people with the orange markers. After you handle that mechanic, Titan will cast Earthen Fury to start the final phase. Papa Titan will then do an alien chestbuster thing and cast Orogenesis, popping out Baby Titan that we fought at the beginning of the fight. He'll cast Earthen Fury, which hurts a lot, so shields and heals are going to be needed for this. And then the whole party is introduced to this one final mechanic. The thing here to remember is that you've seen all of the mechanics before, they just happen in a unique configuration. So let's go over the setup and the execution of this mechanic in detail. First, let's take a look at the stage. Think of it as two racetracks, one on the inside squares and another racetrack on the outside squares. One random AoE will place itself on the center four squares and other AoEs will place themselves on the outside squares. When all these AoEs explode, they're going to rotate clockwise around the stage. We have the tanks and the healers stand in this square grouped up together, and the four DPS are spread out as such. Each melee will be on their own square on the inside, as you see here, while the ranged DPS will take safe squares on the north side and the south side. The reason for this is that the tanks and the healers will all get the orange markers above their heads, while the ranged DPS will get the yellow markers above their heads. Once the AoEs on the stage explode, you want to go into the safe square by rotating clockwise. Because the timing is very unique here, I'm just going to let this play out real time and let you know when we move. Explosion, move. Wait for the explosion, now move. Wait for the explosion, now move. Wait for the explosion, now move. And at that point, that's when the markers go off. After all that happens, come on in for heals, and Titan will drop down the giant blue AoE up at the front. So just use your anti-knockbacks or get knocked back accordingly. Don't forget here tanks that you need to spread out because you'll get the tank buster AoEs. Then Titan will cast Voice of the Land, which is raid-wide damage. He'll throw down some tumults on you and cast another Voice of the Land. He'll finish all of this damage off with an Earthen Fury. So healers, you really need to be on point for this. Next up, we'll get the same mechanic as we got before, which are the racetrack AoEs, where the inside squares are a racetrack and the outside squares are a racetrack. But this time, with the DPS, we'll get the orange markers and the tanks and the healers will get the yellow markers. So we need to switch it up. The DPS will group up behind the AoE on the inside square while the two tanks will take their own separate square on the inside. Meanwhile, the healers will go to the outside of the arena to stand in their safe squares. Once that finishes up, Papa Titan's hands will charge up to throw out a 1-2 punch combination. Right after that, Baby Titan will throw out Stone Crusher, which is the tank buster, and then a tank stack. Titan will then throw out Earthen Fury for raid-wide AoE. Then we'll get the one last race track mechanic where the ranged DPS go outside and the tanks and healers stack on the inside. Just do this part like you did the first one and you'll be all right. Right after that, Titan will charge up his fists again, so watch out for those. And then he'll go into his Enrage sequence. He'll first cast Voice of the Land, then a Tumults, then another Voice of the Land, and again, Tumults. Another Voice of the Land comes up, and finally he'll cast Earthen Fury, which is the Enrage. And that's it! If you've done all the mechanics right and have enough DPS, congratulations, you have just beaten Titan, and I bet it feels amazing just like it did with our group. 
Uh, one of the things we did was we had our first, we had our first first week clear on this fight, and we were really proud of it. We probably progressed for about 30 hours on Titan, uh, you know, because there's no guides and we have to figure out all these mechanics. But hopefully, this guide has helped you out, and hopefully, your group and your team can get that clear and get your weapons and all the cool shiny stuff. If you enjoyed this guide and it helped you out, help out the channel, subscribe, hit that like button. Uh, just a note, I'm going to put down in the comments as many other guides as possible that I can, so that way you guys will have enough resources in order to get this clear. So until next time, keep on adventuring. Come out. Okay, that's... That was really good, but two dead. Gar! Gar! Come on, 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 come on,